The club that once had everything. A squad envied by rivals across Europe, picking up silverware on a regular basis. Now, Palmer are looking to bounce back after more than a decade of financial troubles caused the club to lose it all. One man who stuck with Palmer through the good times and the bad is Gianni Alberti. From the outside, his convenience store looks like any other. But step inside, and his passion for Palmer becomes obvious. I've been a Palmer fan since I was 14, and I'm 65 years old now. You do the math. I've had a lot of experience, and I've seen good things and bad things, but I'll always remember the good times. When Gianni's love affair with Parma began, they were toiling in the lower leagues of Italian football. They spent their entire history there until 1990, when, for the first time, they secured promotion to Serie A. It ushered in a new era of unprecedented success. Many a famous player have played here at the 22,000 capacity Ennio Tardini Stadium. In a 12-year period from 1990, the club won eight trophies and established themselves as one of Europe's top teams. And it was all built on a core squad of global superstars. Legendary Italian goalkeeper Gianluigi Buffon started his career here. Italy's World Cup winning captain Fabio Cannavaro was part of that squad. And the club's most famous son is his former Argentina striker Hernan Crespo, who was sold for a world record fee to Lazio in 2000. But then in 2003, it all came crashing down. During the glory days, the club was sponsored by dairy company Parmalat, two symbols of the city, both a source of pride for Parma residents. But it all went wrong. A corruption scandal saw Parmalat go bust with debts of $20 billion. For Parma, more than a decade of financial troubles and dubious owners followed before it was declared bankrupt in 2015 and demoted to the fourth tier of Italian football. Palmer's Club Museum takes us on a journey into the recent past. Many of the club's former stars loom large. Two UEFA Cups and three Coppa Italias are on display. The contrast between then and now is stark. The days of European success seem a lifetime ago. <laughs> Well, we played against Juventus on Thursday night and we won the UEFA Cup final. The next day, Lorenzo Minotti came to my shop with the cup. He left it here. That cup stayed here for a week. I put it next to the window and then I thought, but what if it's stolen? Not the ham, I wouldn't care about that. You're laughing now, but every day when I closed the shop at lunchtime, I was taking the cup home with me. I was having lunch and coming back here carrying the trophy. I went on doing it every day. It was an incredible experience. Since bankruptcy, the club has regrouped. It now has new owners, is debt-free, is part-owned by fans and is beginning its long journey through the Italian lower leagues. Luca Cara is the managing director and a lifelong fan. He believes the dark days are over. We are sure because the new owners are uh, very serious people and uh, we are uh, seven big uh, owners and so we are uh, sure that uh, we don't uh, have problem of money. This uh, uh, group of owners they want uh, to make big, to, to remake big Parma football club because it's important for uh, the, the city, it's important for the fans and uh, Parma, ta, Parma city is uh, famous in the world uh, thanks to the Parma football club. If the club is to return to its former glory, then this man will play a vital role. Fausto Pizzi won the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup with Parma at Wembley in 1993. He's now in charge of the youth setup, which rivals any in Serie A. All age groups train on the same site as the first team. Pizzi says despite a dark recent past, the future looks bright. We can say that our youth academy is restarting again. After the bankruptcy, we lost many players. We had nine to ten teams with players from different age groups, but we lost almost half of them. 
We had many problems during that period, but after the rebirth last year, and of course after a year of hard work, our kids started to become competitive again. The result of our 2003 born players team is showing that. While the club plans for the future, fans will be forgiven for looking to the past. Supporters like Gianni have secured memories and anecdotes to last a lifetime. But on top of that, he's also maintained a friendship with Italy's World Cup winning captain Fabio Cannavaro. So one day he's here again and this Brazilian woman comes over. But you can tell this woman doesn't have a clue about football. So she asks me where she can buy a palm I tell her to go find the store near the stadium. The moment she's about to leave, Cannavaro stops her, takes out a jersey from his bag and hands it to her. She says thank you and leaves and the next day the same woman came here again and asked me who this mysterious guy was. And I was like, are you crazy? That was Fabio Cannavaro. It may be years before another World Cup winner ends up buying his meat and cheese in this palm of Backstreet. Luca Cara admits they might struggle to reach the heights of two decades ago, but believes that with support from Gianni and thousands of others like him, there's no reason the club can't continue heading in the right direction. The relation is very good. Uh, they say boo boo when we lost, but <laughs> when we lose, but. Uh... The, the, this is uh, regularly, the, this is the, the normally. Our goal is uh, to uh, come back in a Serie A championship. Uh, I don't know when, uh, because um, the, the football is not uh, mathematics. It's been a roller coaster journey for Parma and their fans in recent years, having scaled the highest heights and plummeted to the deepest depths. It's made the bond between the club and the community even stronger. And whatever happens on the pitch, the people of Parma will be with them every step of the way.